Hello everyone, welcome back to Iron Crow Productions Co. My name is Iron Crow, and this is the channel where I post many different types of videos. I post tutorial videos, uh, I post test videos. In fact, test videos are the main purpose of this channel, uh, just so that I can have a record of what I work on when it comes to video production. But I also, from time to time, post Let's Plays here. And, well, these Let's Plays are a little bit special compared to 99.99999% of the Let's Play content that you'll see on the inter internet. Uh, so, well, stereoscopic 3D. That's what I do here. I love 3D, and I like presenting what I'm seeing to the viewers, and hopefully you've got a stereoscopic 3D viewing method. So, what is stereoscopic 3D? Just really quickly, for those of you who might not understand what it is. Well, the simplest way to explain it is, just take a look at your face in the mirror. You've got two eyes, right? If you only got one, I give you my sincerest condolences. But if you've got two eyes, like the vast majority of people, that means that your brain is expecting to see two slightly different perspectives on the world. If you look at a display, like a TV, a movie screen, your phone, whatever, the typical display, you're only receiving the same exact image in both of your eyes. You're still getting a different perspective on the world as a whole, but the world that is being presented to you virtually through the display is only one perspective on that virtual world. So what stereoscopic 3D display does is it allows two separate, two slightly separate offset views to be sent to your left eye and to your right eye and your brain is able to deduce depth information from this. It is able to perceive depth in the true manner that uh, depth is perceived in the real world. There are all sorts of depth cues that the brain takes into account, but being able to have two slightly offset perspectives in each eye is one of the most important ones. So. This Let's Play, let's talk about this. This is Alien Isolation, a game that came out uh, f about two months ago, I think, as I'm recording this, and it looked pretty cool. Uh, I was never a big fan of the Alien series. I never watched, I think, any of the Alien movies, so that wasn't a huge draw for me, but it seemed like it was an okay game, and maybe I'd pick it up on a Steam sale when it was like 80% off. Well, that all changed when I saw Chris of Stereo 3D Productions do his uh, first impressions with the DK2 of this game. Now, I don't have an Oculus Rift. I'm hoping that the uh, consumer version will be released in 2015, which is the year I'm recording this Let's Play. But for the moment, the only thing I can do is watch his videos of Oculus Rift footage on my 3D monitor. And to be able to see this 3D view of this game world. It was incredible. It was astonishing to me. Even though it was it was not a full picture that covered up my entire screen, it was just a sliver of the world, I could still get the 3D and man, it looked amazing. So I knew I'm going to have to accelerate my purchase of this game. And fortunately, I was able to do that with the Steam sale for this past holiday season. So I'm going to do my next Let's Play in Alien Isolation. And this is this is sure to be an amazing experience, I'm sure of it. I have played a little bit and I'll tell you about that all a bit later. But first, very important to explain that this is made possible by two fantastic men who put in, I don't even want to know how many hours to make this game run with a 3D vision system. I am using 3D vision for all of my 3D videos, and unfortunately not every game works with 3D vision, but there are ways and means of fixing games to work, and the fine gentlemen, I got the utmost respect for these guys, Mike underscore AR69, and Bob with a three. His, his name is B-O-3-B, but I just say Bob with a three because otherwise it's unpronounceable. And Ma Mike AR69, that's that's how I'm going to vocalize. I don't know how he prefers to be addressed, but that's what I'm going to do. These two amazing men made this game work just about flawlessly. It works as well as it possibly can, I'm sure. 
and it's going to make this Let's Play possible. So I want to thank them for using the 3D Migoto uh, system to make these fixes happen. And I don't know how to pronounce that word either, 3D Migoto. I don't know. It sounds kind of Japanese. 3D Migoto. I don't know. All right, so let's jump in. Let's press any key. Let's take a quick look at the options. So game options, yeah, nothing really interesting to see here. I am going to be playing this with the mouse and keyboard, so might as well just turn that off. Video settings. There are some interesting things to point out here. Now I'm going to be playing this with the field of view of 85. Now that is horizontal field of view. The game by default has settings given to you in vertical field of view, and that's in fact the, uh, the way that the game uh, takes in the field of view information is vertical field of view. But I have modified the settings file, which is absolutely incredible that you can actually do that in this game, so that I am getting three separate presets for the field of view, and they're being displayed as ver horizontal field of view. Now ordinarily I play with 90, but 85 is the maximum field of view that you can use and still see Ripley's feet and her hands and all of that. So I think that stuff is pretty immersive, uh, especially in 3D. So I'm going to keep that, which means I'm going to be playing this at a field of view of 85 horizontal. All right. Another big problem with this game is the fact that its anti-aliasing options are extremely lackluster. When I was originally booting this game up to do my test runs, I booted it up in SLI. Well, technically it's uh, dual GPU mode because it's one card, but it's functionally the same as SLI. You've got two separate GPUs rendering the game. And this game does not support any of the typical SLI, I mean, any of the typical anti-aliasing like multi-sampling and things of that nature. It supports FXAA and SMAA T1X and SMAA T2X. Now, SMAA T1X is absolutely terrible. You might as well have anti-aliasing off. It just doesn't do anything. You've got insane amounts of staircasing. You've got un unbelievably distracting amounts of shimmer. So that's a, that was a big problem and I did some research and I found out that if I disable SLI or dual GPU mode and just run with single with a single GPU, I can enable SMAA TX2 and that gives much better anti-aliasing results. And that's what I've done and it is absolutely true that the anti-aliasing with this method is leaps and bounds better than SMAA T1X. Now I'm using just one GPU so I figured uh, I might have to turn down some settings but not really. Everything else is maxed except for motion blur. I have that off. Motion blur is not something that particularly bothers me, but I know it bothers a lot of other people. So I'm gonna have it off. I don't, th I don't really gain anything from my experience. In my experience, having it on, so I might as well just have it off. So everything else is maxed out. Shadow map resolution is increased above the default maximum to 4096. So this is promising to be a very, very good looking experience. All right, so there we go with all that. The audio options, these are terrible audio options. Just wanna get that said, put that on record. SFX and cutscene volume. Why would that be one slider? Why on earth would that be one slider? And what does cutscene volume mean? Does that mean speech? I wanna have speech as a separate slider so that I can pump that up, which is very beneficial for these videos because I wanna make sure that the volume level of speaking is gonna be audible even though the, uh, the normal sound effects and music are gonna be low enough that my voice comes over clearly. So this is really irritating. Uh, I wish that they had proper volume sliders, uh, but we're gonna try and do the best we can with what we've got, all right? Dynamic range, uh, this affects how loud the loudest sounds are and how soft the, sound is, the softest sounds are. I'm gonna try full dynamic range, see how that works. Uh, but I can change the dynamic range to headphones or speakers. I wish it was more descriptive than this. I don't know what the fuck that means. Headphones, speakers, what does that mean? Give me some indication of what it does to the dynamic range. All right, so we're gonna go with that. These options are perfectly fine. There aren't a whole lot of options, but 
It's good enough, other than the audio sliders. So we're going to go to play game, and we're going to finally get started. Enough jibber, enough jabber. Play game, Alien Isolation, main campaign. Now, as you can see here, continue game is enabled, but I'm not going to do that, and I'll explain why I have a continue game later on. So here we go. And one more thing to point out is, well, I'll just first point out before I point out the last thing that needs to be pointed out. I'm going to be doing this on Nightmare. And I expect to get my ass kicked. This is probably a mistake. But I can't run scared. I mean, this is this is a game I can't run scared from in any form or fashion. So we're going Nightmare. Nightmare is the ultimate level of difficulty, the greatest test of survival skill. Warning for experienced survival experts only. <sighs> doing it. Do you really want to start a new game? Yep, that's fine. All right, this should be fine. And when we click enter here, we will go into the intro cutscene. And for those of us that play games in 3D, we hate fucking 2D cutscenes, but that is what we're gonna have to deal with in this game. The cutscenes are 2D. <sighs> but I will say that I do have a sort of solution for you. So please hopefully enjoy my solution. But for me, I gotta watch this shit in 2D. All right, here we go. Sega! Final report of the commercial starship Nostromo. Third I'll be quiet reporting. for a minute. The other members of the crew, Kane, Lambert, Parker, Brett, Ash, and Captain Dallas are dead. Never saw the movies, don't know who those people are. Sorry. Cargo and ship destroyed. I should reach the frontier in about six weeks. With a little luck, the network will pick me up. This is Ripley. Last survivor of the Nostromo. Signing off. Alien. Isolation. Trying to do a little bit of Resident Evil voice. Capcom voice. I guess they do that for Devil May Cry too. Devil May Cry. Alien Isolation. Ripley? Ah, so flat. I'm Samuels. I work for the company. Look a bit flat, Ripley. It's about your Whoa, mother. snubbed his ass. We think we may have found her, Amanda. Someone introduces himself and you just go back to work? A commercial There's vessel, a word for that. It starts with B. ...has recovered what we believe to be the flight recorder unit of the Nostromo. Where? Zeta Reticula. What did it tell you? We don't know. The unit was taken to Sevastopol Station. Sevastopol, that's my favorite word in this whole game. The company wants it to be collected as soon as possible. Sevastopol. Sevastopol's a supply depot in the region. It's a, a permanent freeport. I know what it is. Whoa, cutting him off too. Oh my gosh. Transit's arranged. And he doesn't even There's skip a, a beat. Ship called the Torrens heading out that way. He isn't offended in the least. We're going to travel out. We. Oui. Me and another exec. And you, if you're willing. Oh, that's piqued her interest. She's get, handed him some coffee. She's getting a little bit nice now. Okay. I read the case history. I know why you're working in the region where she went missing. You're still looking, aren't you? I've been cleared to offer you a place on the Torrance if you want to come along. Maybe there'll be some. 
closure for you. Deep thoughts. Well, obviously, ta she takes him up on the offer, otherwise there would be no game. Because a game of her welding that uh, machine there would be pretty fucking boring. Alright, here we go. Welcome. To Alien Isolation. In 3D. And I think my depth settings are... Ooh, okay, hello. My depth settings are a little off. Are they? No, that's about where it needs to be, actually. Okay. So here we are. This is the Torrens. I'm using a field of view of 85, so I'm able to see my own underwear. <laughs> okay, we... I'm not going to look down too much. Don't worry about that. This is not the perverted Let's Play. This is the stereoscopic 3D Let's Play of Alien Isolation. And so let's have a little conversation about the 3D in this game real quick. Just a, just some basics to get us started. There will be many discussions of the 3D, I expect, as we go along. Um, but the first thing that I need to say is that I'm using significantly less depth than I usually would with this game. I usually use about 33% for my recordings, my stereoscopic 3D recordings of uh, 3D gameplay. Uh, but that is going to be too much for this game, I think. And the reason is this game has a lot of dark areas that have lights, bright lights in them. And as you may know, if you're a veteran of stereoscopic 3D viewing, high contrast scenarios are extremely difficult for the uh, viewing methods currently popular on the market to deal with. Shutter glasses gets really f screwed over by high contrast. Anaglyph massively screwed over by high contrast. Don't have much experience with polarized glasses, but I'm sure it's exactly the same scenario. So I'm going to be using 25% depth for this Let's Play. It's a bit less depth than I would like to use, but I think it's going to be important to have less depth so that the ghosting is going to be a lot less impactful and distracting from this experience. All right, so our first task in the game is to sign in. And I just love the aesthetic of this game. It's like old future tech. Future technology using old technology, which is something that I it's something that I really love in, in terms of fictional settings. It's the steampunk vibe, the cyberpunk vibe. Maybe not so much cyberpunk, but certainly steampunk, where you've got kind of anachronistic technologies juxtaposed together. And I sound like a uh, academic with his foot up his ass when I speak like that, so I won't do that anymore. I will just continue on to the bathroom where I know that I can take a shower. The reason I know I can take a shower is because I've played through this this section before. And I've actually played the first hour of the game, and I've actually recorded the first hour of the game, but I decided that I was going to restart from scratch, restart anew, and do this again. I didn't really progress too far. So there are plenty of surprises ahead of me, but for now, I'm just gonna just look around, check things out. But I do know where there are some items I can pick up, and I presume those will help me with the crafting system. Alright. So you can just turn that off and on, but you can't really do anything with it. So there are items that you can pick up. Usually they have some tor some type of green lighting, just to indicate that you can open it up. I do believe it is random what you get out of them. Okay. So there's a save point. I don't really need to save right now. So, here we're going to come across probably the biggest problem with the stereoscopic 3D in this game that I have encountered thus far. And that is the fact that when you 
access the terminal, the camera goes right up to the terminal window, to the terminal display, and by default, with this with this current convergence setting, it's going to be way too much pop out. So I'm going to demonstrate it for you right now. So just prepare your eyes for a little bit too much out of window illusion. All right, so that's what it looks like. So what I need to do is reduce the convert. Whoops, that's the wrong button. I need to reduce the convergence. There we go. So that should be comfortable to view. All right. So the first time I came through here, I read all of these. I'm not going to read this one. I'm just going to basically give you a synopsis. And if you want to read it in detail, you can pause the video. But uh, somebody named Blaine writes to Verlaine. And they're talking about how Sevastopol Station is laying people off. And uh, the station is basically going to be shutting down. And we will find out more about that as we progress through the story. Alright, so I'm going to have to do this every single time. Which is, I look at a terminal, and then I'm going to have to c come out and fix the convergence back to where it should be for the regular game world. This is going to get pretty tedious. I apologize. But I may be able to cut it out. Uh, event eventually I'll be able to get to the point where I'll, I can cut that out, hopefully. And make it a bit more of a smooth experience for those of you viewing this. All right, let's have a conversation with her. Good morning. Ripley, it's certainly not good. I very much doubt it's morning either. Sorry. I feel like death. I don't know how you people put up with hypersleep regularly. You get used to it. I don't do long haul very often. Most legal execs don't travel further than the coffee machine. I'm surprised Wayland Yutani felt the need to send legal at all. The loss of the Nostromo and its cargo cost the company a lot of money. It's important we find out what happened. If I can close the case with a conclusive accident report, it'll look great with my superiors. I'm sorry. That was insensitive. I realize your mother has been missing for 15 years and, and you... It's okay. We'll both get what we want, right? Uh, have you seen Samuels? He's probably been up for hours. I'll catch up with him. Now this Ripley, who just had the conversation with Taylor, is very different from the Ripley that snubbed that gentleman at the very beginning of the game in the cutscene. And... <laughs> and just cut him off when he's speaking. And this, this Ripley's like, oh yeah, you just talk about how this is about your career advancement when I'm looking for my mother. And Ripley's just like, yeah, that's alright, we'll both get what we want here. She's really nice and uh, understanding. Which is the real Ripley? I don't know yet. Which is the real Amanda Ripley? I think we're going to find out as the game goes on. Is she a total B, as the as the intro cutscene would suggest, or is she actually uh, just a nice, uh, hard-working lady looking for her mother? All right, now, just I just want to take a little bit of a break to point out that this woman here, Taylor, the uh, lawyer, the legal counsel. She reminds me a lot of a character from a TV show that Chris of Sarah 3D Productions turned me in, tuned me into called The Book of Pure Evil. Todd in the Book of Pure Evil it was a Canadian production that unfortunately only ran for three seasons. But my favorite character in that show was a girl, young woman, whatever, named Hannah. And this Taylor character reminds me heavily of her. Taylor has a permanent derp face. That's what I call it. The permanent derp face. You can't really see it here because we're too far away. But you can see it a little bit. I mean, there's a little bit of derpiness there. I don't, I don't know if you can really tell, but I see it. Uh, when, once we get to the next 2D cutscene, you'll see what I'm talking about, all right? But yeah, totally Hannah right there. Oh my god. Spitting image. Okay. Let's just make sure we loot everything. I can't continue through here yet. Well, I can continue through that door, but this one I can't. I need to first go somewhere else. Talk to someone else. And then we'll be able to do that. So, I'm just gonna take a quick look at this. 
Reduce the convergence a bit. Or a lot. Okay. So this is... These are Taylor's personal uh, notes. Torn's Manifest just talks about um, the ship we're on and who's on it and what the cargo is and all that good stuff that nobody actually gives a shit about. And this is... Um, who is this from? Oh, this is just a report on the Nostromo. It's just some background on the Nostromo. For people like me that have no idea what the, uh, what the mythology of Alien is. I know about Xenomorphs. I know about that, but I don't really know the story and the world and all of that and how it all ticks. So I'm glad they've got that stuff in for newbies like me. So we're going to go through here, and this is a really cool corridor. Yeah. Check out that volumetric fog. That kind of dissipates once you get close to it for some reason, but... Okay. Yeah, why does it dissipate? Do they understand how much of a letdown that is for those of us playing in 3D? Look at cool screenshots, though. And I will be taking copious numbers of screenshots, so... Uh, if you don't like me taking screenshots, go find another 3D Let's Play of this game. And good fucking luck doing that, by the way. Because it doesn't exist. Alright, let's talk to... What's his name? I, I forget his oh, name. Ripley. Samuels. Samuels, there Did you wake up early? Well, I don't really need as much sleep as the rest of you. I was just inspecting the Torrens facilities. A well-maintained ship. I realize it's a very similar model to... The Nostromo. Yes. M she cut him off again. A later pattern, but close in spec. I've worked engineering jobs on ships like this. Of course. Is Taylor up yet? She's not a seasoned traveler. Hypersleep may have been punishing for her. We talked. She seems nervous. Hmm. I hadn't noticed. She's a skilled executive, though. Should help us with any legal issues we might encounter. Now it's very evident to me that Taylor was extremely All nervous. Oh. Approaching Station. Looks like we're up. Oh, whoa, 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 pushy McPush push. Okay, that's actually a problem with this game that we're gonna find out about later. Um, yeah. So Samuels gets his revenge, I guess. But, uh, and Samuels was saying that he didn't notice that Taylor was kind of uneasy about this whole affair. It was obvious to me, it was obvious to Ripley. So I think that I've got a suspicion that Samuels is a bit of a social... <sighs> What's a nice way to say it? I don't want to say social retard, because that's, that's such a mean way of describing it. He's... He's a social idiot, okay? Is that slightly less offensive to... Um, the people in question, I don't know. Uh, but he, he just can't read people, and so I think that's why when Ripley is just off the charts rude to him, cutting him off, and just snubbing his ass, I think that's why he just continues on as if nothing had happened. Alright, so here we go to the bridge of the Torrens, where we meet the captain, the Captain S of the Torrens, and, uh, the story progresses. Taylor's here, Samuels is here. Let's do this. Hope you all had a restful journey. What happened to her leg the there? I don't know if you saw that. Good order for an old M -class captain. She was a wreck when I bought her. Took a few years and a lot of contracts to refit. She pays for herself now. You said we're approaching Sevastopol Station. Are we docking? I believe your contact is Marshal Waits, is that right? I'll hail Sevastopol and arrange boarding with him. Good. Let's get this done. Don't worry, Miss Taylor. Routine. In and out. Connor, how we doing? SMG loaded and calibrated. Approach vector locked. Prep comms so I can say hello. <laughs> that guy's real down home. Captain, does everyone have their briefing documents? You can watch the approach on the monitors. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> yeah, though, they, the NPCs, they don't respect your space. That is a problem with this game. They don't care about your boundaries, your physical presence. 
bit of an issue that detracts from the realism of the game when someone's just pushing into me like I'm not even there. Oh, oop. Okay. There's this guy. I guess he's the helmsman. This is another cool thing I like about this game is when you crouch, Ripley does a little bit of an animation. She doesn't just fall straight down like in most first person games. There's actually some effort put into it. Yeah, I'm liking that. Immersion building. Alright, so I don't think there are any items I can pick up in here. Uh, I didn't find any the first time I came through here. And I'll explain why this is the second recording in a minute, but let's just let's just watch the cutscene first and get on to the Sevastopol. Here we go. Can we see it? Switch to monitors. Sevastopol Station. Is that damage? It looks like damage. Punch up 74, tight angle. Looks like the dry dock bay is screwed. I can't bring the Torrens into that. This is a commercial vessel Torrens out of St. Clair, registration number MSV7760, calling Sevastopol traffic control. We're carrying three passengers on a whale and Utani Bond. You're holding the Nostromo flight recorder unit. We request immediate permission to transfer the passengers port side over. That does not sound healthy. <laughs> Do you see that derp face right there? Derp, derp, derp. This is the Torrent. Say again. Oh, God. The station's comms seem pretty screwed up, so our fitted Samuel suit with a radio booster. I can only keep the Torrens in transit for 24 hours. You'll have heard from us by then. Sounds very confident. They don't know what they're walking into, but you know. Stand by. My contract doesn't cover bloody spacewalks. It's the only option, and it's perfectly safe if you do what I tell you. Don't worry, Hannah. We'll be fine. I mean, Taylor. Ha! <laughs> An orbit above Jupiter. My God, Ripley, you're doing good, Tim. <laughs> that face. I'm sorry. Just keep okay, on. okay, things are getting real. Okay, <laughs> they zoomed in on that face. I love it. See, I don't get why they wouldn't be able to respond. I mean, how how could they survive? I don't. I actually don't know if they survived, but I I gotta believe that the chances of them surviving are ninety nine point nine nine nine. Why would they introduce characters just to kill them off immediately? But why would the comms not work? It makes no sense. Yeah, you got thrown around a bit, but the comms should still work. That's stupid. Okay. I'm also gonna try and cut out the uh, loading screens. They aren't very long. They're not as long as the vanishing of Ethan Carter's loading screens, which go on for over a minute, but they are a bit long, like 15, 20 seconds. So I just decreased the convergence right here so that the helmet is not painful. But it is going to make the game world look a bit weird. Yeah. This this game world looks really weird, but I think this is the best. 
We're only going to be in this view for like 15 seconds. So that's all good. All right, let's get out of this suit. All right. Here I am. Just fix that convergence. And the way I usually set convergence in first person games is I go to a wall and I just. I just get basically the wall at screen depth, or maybe a little bit outside of the screen. So that's what I've done, and that usually looks pretty realistic. But due to the fact that this is being played at 25% depth, which is really kind of low, uh, the game world doesn't look very realistic. This is almost gimmicky levels of 3D, uh, just because of how low the total maximum separation is. But we've got to make concessions for the fact that this is a very high contrast game and we don't want too much ghosting. Okay. Use registration points to manually save your progress. They will warn you if enemies are nearby. Well, I know that there are no enemies nearby here. Just a piece of scrap. And I am actually going to end the part right here. Seems like a good place to end it, don't you think? Right next to a registration point where I can save my game. I can pause the recording for a minute and continue in part two of my stereoscopic 3D Let's Play of Alien Isolation. So, let us continue in the next part. Have a good day.